I was born in Denver, Colorado in 1971. It was a cool place to be. As I grew up, so did the city. And at some point, it outgrew me. American Securities. This is Michael. How can I help you? Yeah. Hi, Michael. This is Rick. I want to talk to you about making a loan against my retirement account, please. I'm 50 years old. I'm headed to a place I only knew of through stories. And I'm going to try to create a brand new life. I'm heading home. Well, that was a long trip. Uh, that, was, that was quite the adventure. I, I, I didn't think we were ever going to get here, but here we are, nonetheless. Uh, we are in lovely Erling, Iowa. This is uh, just, just outside the border. Uh, between Iowa and Nebraska, and this is where my family basically had a farm forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Um, all of them have grown up and moved away and done their own thing, and I have now moved back because I just can't take it anymore, and uh, I want to get a taste of uh, whatever 
whatever was there when it, before I was even thought of, really. Um, so across the street is my landlord, Deborah. She has graciously allowed me to rent this meeting hall slash office area, something along those lines. Uh, this will be where I'll be working from and living for most of, if not all of the series, hopefully most of, though. Um, it's nothing to write home about, but it's, you know, it's a roof over your head, and, and uh, you, you kind of you kind of go through and uh, do what you got to do. So across the way is a little farm that comes, or a little uh, field, I should say, that comes along with the monthly rental. We're, we'll be working that as we can. As you can see, I only have like two bucks on me. Oh, God, get out of the street. I only have like two bucks on me, and uh, it kind of sucks. And I didn't believe it, but, uh, you know, 6.50 in the morning, and by God, it is dark here. Look at the haze. I mean, that's just, that's just amazing. So uh, it looks like we got a little bit of weather that may be moving in, but you know we'll see what we can do from from here. Now, I don't have a whole lot of equipment. I jumped onto uh, Craigslist the minute I got here, and and turns out you know these these tractors are really tough to afford. <laughs> so um, I found this one. This is a uh, Case uh, seventy two hundred Pro series, and uh, it's in pretty bad shape. It needs a little bit of work. Uh, but there, I, I went ahead and paid for it, and here it is. Um, as you can see, uh, in all its glory, uh, boy, it's got some dirt on it. It's had some use. Um, certainly got some mileage. Let's go ahead and jump on in. You can see it definitely needs some repairs, and it's kind of low on fuel. But this will be our workhorse. This is what uh, I'm going to be using from this point forward uh, until things change and financially, and we get a little bit more stabilized. But uh, like I say, at this point, we got a roof over our head. We got a vehicle that we can uh, we can work through and 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 make happen. And this is good. This is a good starting point. Now, uh, we will also be doing contract work until we can start getting some money put together. First and foremost, the very first thing I need to do is get this bad boy repaired because it, like you saw, it's not in very good shape. Then along the way, we'll be getting, you know, little equipment. I've definitely got to get a little hauler trailer for maybe some transport contracts. It would be nice to get a little cedar and get some seed on the ground in, in our field here, field six. Um, yeah, luckily, it's plowed and it's it's ready to go. Um, but I've got my eyes set on some fairly large projects <laughs> coming up. So we'll have some we'll have some serious money that we need to be making. However, let's take a look at the job board and see if we can uh, find something that, that we can make some money on real quick. So this is our job board. Um, basically anything that's available uh, in terms of getting work done on fields that other people own is going to be listed here. Now, <laughs> again, we don't have any equipment, so how, do you, how are we going to make any kind of money? How are we going to pick up these contracts? Well, you have an option to either accept the contract as it is, meaning you're going to use your own equipment, or you can borrow items. So, for example, we've got the uh, plowing contract here on field 37. It is 10.4 acres, and we can borrow a front weight, we can borrow a tractor, and we can borrow the plow. And that's really good. Pay 6478 if we use our own equipment, or we will lose 1093 if uh, we borrow or we lease equipment for that. So the money just comes out the bottom end and will be paid less than 1093 same thing's true across the board with the exception of these transporting contracts now you have to bring your own equipment there's nothing you can borrow and you need a trailer for that and you you probably better have some sort of some sort of forklift or something like that that you can uh, load the items onto your trailer with so we won't be picking up any kind of transporting contracts as of yet because we don't really have a whole lot to work with as i have mentioned repeatedly but we do have the ability to borrow equipment so we can seed fields, we can harvest fields, we can cultivate fields, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so looking things over, I have had my eyeball on field 17. It's a big money contract. It'll pay out 11,204 minus 1765. So I figure we'll get about nine grand out of that. And the interesting thing about contracts in terms of farming simulator 19 is you go through, you do the work, and up to a certain point when you're turning in the uh, product that you've pulled off the fields, 
you will have fulfilled the contract. It's about 80, 85, maybe 90% of the contract or 90% of the field is turned in. The, 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 the product is off the field. You're dropping it into a, into a bin. All of a sudden that contract completes and whatever is left over is yours. So we would make up potentially uh, the loss by borrowing the equipment. Uh, we'll go through all that here in just a little bit. I think what we're going to do is we're going to borrow these items. And now that contract is active. So what I need to do is jump into my tractor here, my good old case, and we need to drive down to the shop so that we can grab these pieces of equipment and get started harvesting field 17. Now down in the bottom left hand corner, you will see the map and that is basically, we're going to call that GPS, make sure train's not coming. This is a divided highway, I absolutely love this on this map, this is pretty cool, luckily nothing's coming. So the equipment is all set for us to pick up and get moving with. What I'm going to do is find a good place to park that's out of the way and doesn't interfere with their business. And also something that, a place where they won't sell mine. <laughs> and let's run over and take a look at what we've got here. Now in terms of harvesting fields, you have a number of things we have. These are called tippers. This is actually going to be a tandem tipper. We hook up this to the tractor and this to the other tra trailer. And this beautiful Fent 900 series. That is a good, good little thing to have. Um, that's going to pull both of those. And we will end up taking that to the tipping point. This is our header trailer. And this sits on the trailer. You don't want to drive with that header on. As you can see, it's humongous. And uh, it's kind of, a, kind of an interesting thing to work with. So first and foremost, what we need to do is climb into this Fent and get that thing going. And then we're going to hook up our tandem trailers and get those out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Still getting used to this Iowa air. Uh, we'll hook up to these tandem trailers and get those out of the way. And then we will drag these over to field 17. Doing this a little bit blind. We can switch over to our drone view third person part third party view however you want to call it there we go i was just a little bit off and now we can take these over to field 17 and drop them. but first let's get an idea where we're going so field 17 is down a ways okay so we'll be there right by that lime station all right sounds good so let's get a good view i'm going to spin third no you know what i'll switch over oh my goodness if i'm gonna drive i better be facing forward huh so we're gonna come down this divided highway never know what these guys are gonna do i think he's gonna turn but we'll see nothing coming that way no he's gonna go straight i'll be danged oh goodness sorry wow i'm still getting used to driving <laughs> In the first person. I don't do it very often. Normally I spend it in third party. So we'll come down here. We need to get to our exit, which is coming up. And we'll go ahead and signal. That way nobody writes us any kind of ticket. And then we're going to be making a left. Interesting. Looks like they're growing cotton here. That's normally not something that you would expect to see in Iowa, but that's okay. Whoops. Oh, that's not good for that traffic behind me. They're not going to be very happy about that one. Many apologies. Luckily, I can't see him in the mirror, so maybe he turned off. as we drive through old downtown Erling here. Let's see, I believe we need to make a right. And then we're gonna be jumping onto the field, which is 17 up here on the left. Now I have crop destruction, oops, 
of crop destruction on, so we need to be incredibly... What are we running into here? Oh, I bet it's that trailer set. Dang it. Third party. What a way to start. Ugh. Disconnect both of these trailers. Okay, there's that one. That's out of the way. I'll just have to drag the other one over. I guess I could have pulled onto this guy's property, but I didn't want to be a pain in the back. Oh, got them both out. Hmm. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to sort of cheat a little bit. We're going to fast travel over to our harvester. Now, the harvester. Drag this over. The harvester is going to be able to grab this header, and then the header goes on the trailer, and then the harvester is able to connect way down in the bottom there. You can see that right just between the or right off the axle there. That's the uh, ejection port for any kind of straw that the field may may. Uh, release as you're cutting it. I bet I'm not hitting this worth a darn. Nope, I'm not. Um, but there's also a trailer hitch there, so you can connect up your trailer and drag that right to the field. I'm not overly fond of header trailers. Uh, I've had some difficulty with those, but like I say, you don't really want to be driving on main roads with that thing. I'm going to stay in third part, third person view for this run, just so you can get an idea of the countryside. I believe that's barley up ahead of us here. Straighten it out. Ooh, that guy turned. Alright, now these things are... Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, a little traffic. Where are you going? What are you doing? You're turning, so you just wait on me. Okay. These, these things, I know, shut up. These things are monstrous. And, uh, man, I'll tell you, you, you don't want to be playing bumper cars with this. It's a, it's a half a million dollar rig just for the harvester alone, not counting the trailer and, and the header. Uh, 20, 26 miles an hour top speed, so it doesn't go very fast, but, um, keep going straight, please. Thank you. Um, it's a beast, let me tell you. I've used this a lot with other farms that I've worked on, and I love the way it drives. It's uh, very smooth, very dependable, but boy does it cost a fortune. Alright, always on a bridge. Oh, good night. Always on a bridge with the big trucks that come along. Alright. <laughs> now, if we can get down to the field without killing anybody, we'll be doing pretty good. Get a view of the inside of this thing while we're driving. You can see there's your computerized controls, your GPS stuff, things like that. Uh, there are pedals down on the floor, but uh, sometimes it's easier just to drive with the joystick. So make sure we're clear. I love the view inside this cab too, man. You can see forever. All right, we are going to use this as our launching point. And then we can get started. 17 is a huge field, by the way. It's really big. So, let's go ahead and disconnect our trailer. We'll connect our header, and then we can get going on our contract. Now, obviously, this is a game, so it's 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 as close to real as we're going to get, but uh, you would never just walk up to a header and connect to it like that. There are other connections that you would need to make. So, okay. First things first, we need to unfold the harvester. That makes everything go wide open. Our pipe connects up to the main shaft, and the holding, that's the container box up on top. Otherwise, it's just a big dang diesel engine wrapped around some pretty decent uh, 
plastic and stuff like that. Second to that, we need to turn on the harvester, which then automatically drives the header down. And at that point, we just need to drive onto the field and we can start cutting what are called headlands. Now headlands, uh, you basically just kind of cut the edge of the field. It's literally all you do. So I'm going to turn on our cruise control, which will top us out at a whopping six miles an hour. And we'll just cut in the ends of the fields. That uh, saves you on turning. Um, as you can see, there's trees and everything else that line these fields. Uh, the road out there. And if we cut in these areas, these safe areas or headlands, uh, it gives the equipment a chance to a chance to work without interfering with other things that are on on the outside of the field, and also without damaging the equipment. So, now every now and again on these fields, there is a huge divider, uh, kind of like what we're coming up on. You can see that land. For whatever reason, I don't know. Maybe it's a right of way. Maybe it's maybe it's a, a public access thing. I don't know. Um, but there is a grass field cut right in the middle of this thing. Uh, grass uh, on uh, not awning um, easement. And uh, I don't know why, but it presents an issue for us. So we'll just end up cutting around it. And I mean, this is basically the job at this point. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let the hopper fill up. And once that's full, then I will jump over to the fence and drag that over. And we'll end up filling the back side of the trailer first. And if there's anything left, we'll fill up the front side with that. Make another round. And then we'll dive back in. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's do a quick montage on this and uh, when everything's all complete we'll come back and give you a wrap up on how things went so I'll see you in a moment So, we have now com completed a good portion of the contract, however, uh, we have got completely full tippers here. So let's actually dive into our contract, oh shoot I hate when I do that. There we are. You can see we've completed 50% of the contract, now that's, that's pulling product off the field and in a moment we're going to deliver these two. Uh, what do we need to take those to animal market greens? Let's figure out where that is. Um, and that'll bump up the progress from 50% to wherever, wherever it ends up. So I uh, wanted to bring that up now in terms of, oh, it doesn't show leased items. I'll be darned. Let's do it this way. We are using the Agco ideal. As you can see, it's uh, 538 horsepower uses uh def diesel engine fluid i believe is what that's called or diesel engine fuel it's a mixture in the fuel to eliminate some of the exhaust stuff that presents problems um very expensive machine four hundred sixty five thousand dollars just to lease at twenty three thousand dollars so we're getting a heck of a deal being able to borrow this this equipment from uh our benefactor there um but it's a big old machine it really is uh 24 miles an hour top speed we were getting 26 but that's fine um and then the Fent 900 uh it's uh it's it's in the large category in terms of tractors i don't i don't 
I wouldn't call it exactly a massive one. There are certainly bigger ones out there. Um, but Fence is a beautiful tractor. I absolutely love the Fence in this game. They are so much fun to run. Uh, 305 horsepower base model, 37 miles per hour. So we are going to figure out where we need to take this. Now in the bottom left-hand corner, again, the GPS, we'll call it. Uh, you can see that uh, there's a green flashing circle. So from where we are, we need to take our main road around. And I'm going to turn the help menu back on because I'm not 100%. That's why we were on there in the first place. Um, to try to get rid of that little help menu in the upper, upper left-hand corners to the lower. Uh, at any rate, I want to make sure that we are tipping on the proper side for these tippers. So let me get those changed to the... Turn your beacons off. There we go. Left. Tip side left. All right beautiful now we are going to follow this little tiny road I suppose I could have gone down the other road but that's okay we'll take the main road it's a little more view uh, beneficial to the viewing I believe off to our left is our big huge truck stop in Erling and this would be sort of like a residential area there's the old garage uh, that one's just decoration. We'll be doing all of our repairs at the shop. Uh, we get a little bit of a better rate uh, than we have been through a mechanic. So. Uh, and then at some point, hopefully, we'll have our own land, and then we can uh, do our repairs on our own stuff. And Although it'll still cost some money, it, uh, it won't have a premium that the dealerships have. So Traffic's awfully light. The population, last I knew in Erling, Iowa, is only 347, and it was actually on the decline. Uh, which, you know, it, it was, it's a little small farming community in in, early, in Iowa, and uh, it, it's not like it was this major metropolis to begin with, but uh, 347 is still pretty dang small. So, let's see, somewhere around here should be a tipping point. Let's get this truck out of our way. How you doing? How you doing? There we are. I would imagine this is probably where we need to be. Now, if we screw this up, I'm in some deep stuff. If this is not where we're supposed to drop, I'm going to have some explaining to do big time. Now, that's very interesting. I wonder... There we go. Okay. Sometimes you have to get to uh, a specific point to do the drop into the bin there. So we'll get both of these dropping their barley into the catcher. At some point we're going to work our way up to the first, the, the more, the trailer more closest to the... Uh, tractor. There we go. 58% transported for field 17. So that was definitely the right place to drop. Thank goodness. Now we'll just take our little shortcut here and drive on back up to the harvester and get out of this poor guy's way. Good morning, good morning. And we'll get field 17 cleared off and get our money. Uh oh, jeez, sorry. I gotta get better at looking for traffic, man. Let's see. Oh, we're at the base of 17. Okay, there we go. Just getting my bearings. Let's minimize our GPS here so we're not causing problems with traffic, folks. Now you see that the straw is on the ground there. That's uh, that's by design. Uh, you. On your own fields, you can pick up that straw and then either use it for your animals or resell it or what have you. Because we're working a contract, we don't have the ability to pick that straw up and resell it. So unfortunately, a little bit of a loss of income on our part for that, but <clears throat> straw doesn't really sell that much, so for, or for that much, I should say. So we're just going to leave it on the ground and our contract uh, supplier will take care of that on his own. 
I believe we still have some left in the hopper in the harvester so I'm going to put the cover on our front trailer and just slide in underneath that pipe and it'll empty out and then we'll get back to clearing off the field so once the field's done then I will jump back on I'm most certain we had some left Interesting. Okay, no problem. We'll jump in the harvester and see. Oof. Yeah, 44% is still in there, so I must not have been hitting the trigger point. There we go. Alright, so, just got that little bit, a couple more laps to go, and then this field will be cleared off and we can pick up our money. And then uh, we'll pick up another contract and see how things go from there. So I'll pick you back up once this field's cleared off. Okay, we have completed the field 17 and we are just about to empty the last little bit of our barley here whoops if I can keep it over the tra trailer there we are now as I mentioned as we started this thing there's going to be an overage there always is an overage when you're working in turn when you're working on a harvest um, there's only so much that the the uh, farmer wanted to get in the first place and his contract with the buyer uh, is only willing to accept so much so um, describe it however you want that's basically what's the what's behind the story so uh, anything that's over is just sort of a bonus to us now you can either be incredibly quick on the trigger <laughs> and uh, stop overloading into the silo or the sale point at a certain at, at a point when when the contract is fulfilled or you just continue to sell it now if you stop overloading then you are able to there we go I hate doing that on that on those trailers uh, you are able to uh, claim that overage as your own take it to your own silo and drop it in and there you go that may become important once we have a silo but at this point we, we really don't have much of anything so what I am going to do from here is I'm going to return the ideal Fent to uh, the farmer. I forget his name at the moment. We'll just drive it into here. And then I'm going to use his tractor and trailer set, obviously, to deliver the product. We'll bring that back, and then we'll collect our monies. So I will see you over at the silo. So we've arrived at the Animal Market Grains Drop Facility. Uh, this is an impressive, <laughs> this is impressive as heck. Uh, humongous silos all over the place, but nonetheless, the trailers are emptied out. If you paid attention, we were actually at negative two when I left the field. Um, the reason for that was I accidentally hit hire a worker. You can hire a worker and uh, they'll take over for you. You can go about doing your business for whatever. Call it a subcontractor in, in, for, in what we're doing today. Um, however, uh, I accidentally hit that, that drove our money down and I knew I hit it wrong. It's just something I tend to do. So my error that said, we have made a significant amount of money already, even on our first contract. And we haven't even turned in and completed the contract to collect our final monies. So the overage I spoke about came very early. I dropped a uh, field, uh, excuse me, field <laughs> trailer two was way more full. It was actually completely full. Uh, whereas trailer one had 50% in it. I pulled up set up trailer two as the active trailer made the drop and I would say a quarter of the trailer was was in the silo or the sale point and We had our contract fulfilled everything else to that point forward that was dropped into that silo was sold as pocket money for us and that is absolutely incredible that was a massive help. That was way more money than I expected we would get out of that. And we still have the initial contract to collect on once we get this trailer turned back in, or tractor and trailer set turned back in. So very happy about that one. At this point, all we have left to do is drive this uh, set back over to the farm, drop it off, and then we can go back to our tractor, perhaps get it repaired, and we'll pick up another harvesting contract.
All of that will have to be picked up on the next episode, though. Thank you for watching up to this point. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much. If you want to become one, just click subscribe, ring the bell. You'll get notified when I post another section of this thing up. I made this primarily for my family, but, you know, it doesn't preclude anyone from watching that. We'll pick this up on the next episode. We're going to pick up some more contracts, do some more farming, do all kinds of crazy stuff. In the meantime, appreciate everybody who's taking a look at this point. Continue to do so, and we will catch you on the next one.